Hello and welcome. I'm Amritan Shurai and you're watching Law of the Land on Raj Sabha TV. Today we bring to you the Northeastern Areas Reorganization Amendment Bill 2011, which seeks to provide better service conditions to IES, IPS and IFS officers by creating different cadres for Tripura and Manipur. To discuss the issue, I have with me P.P. Rao, Mr. P.P. Rao, who's senior advocate in the Supreme Court, and Mr. K.K. Mitra, who's a retired IPS officer. Now for the headlines. The Northeastern Areas Reorganization Amendment Bill 2011 seeks to provide better service condition for the central government officers. Bill seeks to provide for separate cadre for Northeastern states, Manipur and Tripura, to have their own cadres. Salaries of Indian Administrative Service, Indian Police Service and Indian Forest Service to be paid by the respective states. The Northeastern Areas Reorganization Amendment Bill 2011 seeks to provide separate cadres for the Indian Administrative Services, Indian Police Services and Indian Forest Services for the states of Manipur and Tripura. Presently, there is a joint cadre for these services for the two states resulting in irregular service condition. Manipur and Tripura, two different states with separate needs of government services as their language is different and culture is different. But complex laws for those officers of the central government cadre who are responsible for providing government services prevent better delivery of services to the citizens. According to the existing law, there is a joint cadre for both these states under which IAS, IPS and IFS officers have to serve in both the states. But now, the central government intends to change this. Manipur and Tripura will soon have a separate cadre of the IAS, IPS and IFS. Once the bill gets passed in the parliament, the northeastern area's working cadre in Tripura and Manipur joint cadre will be bifurcated into Tripura and Manipur cadres. Whenever issue states are reorganized, parliament has to make some consequential provisions in respect of services. So there is nothing unusual in the reorganization containing a provision for services. Northeastern Areas Reorganizations Amendment Bill 2011 proposes to amend the existing act to facilitate the states to have their own cadres for the administrative purposes. Now, the Service Commission can increase recruitments by Governor's approval instead of the President of India's approval. And the expenditure on these services would be borne by the state governments. This will result in better service conditions for the officers. Cultural, tribal, linguistic, and other coordinates of these two states are totally, totally different. There's nothing common between Tripura and Manipur. Now, an officer who serves in Tripura, for example, for five years, if he is then posted as a DIG or IG or whatever in Manipur, he will be all at sea. The Indian Constitution provides a Public Service Commission for the Union, a Public Service Commission for each of the state, or a Joint Public Service Commission for a group of states under Article 315. The JPSC of Manipur and Tripura was granted when they were Union Territories. Both these states were elevated from Union Territory status through Northeastern Areas Amendment Act 1971. Since then, these two states are sharing a Joint Public Service Commission. Raj Kamal, Rajya Sabha TV. Yes, uh, Mr. Rao. Uh you said very clearly that this is a routine bill. What is the importance of a routine bill? Because this is one bill which normally doesn't come to anyone's notice. It just comes and passes by. So why should a routine bill actually be brought to the notice of the people? Yes. Every bill introduced in parliament is a matter of great public interest. Because bills are formulated after a good deal of deliberation, and generally following certain demand in some sections. In this case, Tripura has been asking for it since long. And it took a long time, and the government of India had to carry on negotiations and consultations with various authorities, concerned departments, because three services are involved. Mm -hmm. Administrative service, Indian administrative service, Indian police service, and Indian forest service. So all the concerned departments had to be consulted, governments had to be consulted, Manipur and Tripura, and central government officials have to be there to interact. It is only after all this, ultimately they found that, yes, this is time now to separate the two cadres. The question to you, Mr. Mitra, is um, it's really interesting. The implication of the bill on the officers, the three, ca the three categories that we pointed out, IES, IPS, and IFS officers, 
how do you think will their services condition, service condition improve once the bifurcation happens? Well, service conditions as such doesn't depend on which state you are posted in. Mm -hmm. The whole purpose of a union uh, service, federal service, in Indian context, all India service, is that the service conditions are controlled by the Carter Controlling Authority, mm -hmm. which is in the case of the IPS, uh, the uh, Department of POD and in the Minister of Home Affairs. The thing which will happen is uh, whether there was any possibility in the past of interchangeability of the uh, service officers from one state to another state. I have it on good authority, people who have served in those states, including former governors, that it was hardly the case. In fact, there's not much interchangeability so it is making a de facto situation a de jure thing, mm -hmm. number one. Number two, it was an aberration, which should have been long corrected. You see, these two states, as I mentioned during that bite that you had shown, mm -hmm. have nothing in common. India has, uh, not only is a diverse country, it is a tremendous problem in the Northeast. They have all this uh, socio-cultural uh, differences. Are you trying to say, sir, that uh, the uh, an officer who if once, when they were joint under one cadre, uh, one officer could easily be transferred into the other uh, state. And since you need specialized skills to deal with one condition of the state and one linguistic uh, uh, requirements are there, that changes if that same officer is sent to another it, state. Is that a point it, it, you're it trying does, to make? It does, it does. What I mean to say is, it was not happening mm -hmm. that way. So the, it was an aberration. Every state, every state in India, barring one or two now, have got single cadres. Mm -hmm. All IAS, IPS, and IFS officers are allotted to various cadres. But I'm talking specifically of the strategic services, which mm -hmm. is like Indian Police Service and the IAS, and IAS. The IFS. You know, each IAS or IPS officer, a Bengali who goes to Tamil Nadu, has to learn the local language. He has to imbibe the local culture. He has to function there. Now, so essentially, a bureaucrat who was going in Tripura and uh, Manipur cadre want, had to learn two languages. You mean to say they could not? They, that is why they didn't ever did also. In fact, according to one of the former um, experts, that uh, it, it, he thought that the IAS and IPS officers were not keen to go to northeast, mm -hmm. particularly these kind of states. And he ex um, uh, told me that you should have only. Uh, state service officers. Mm -hmm. Now, in a federal system, this dual system prevails all over the world, in union service as well as state service. It is still there. Right. I'll just bring in Mr. Rao. Uh, 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 Mr. Rao, the point that Mr. Mitra is trying to make, the bill doesn't specifically spell it, these things out the way Mr. Mitra is bringing out the aspect. But doesn't it actually provide for better service conditions in the way that they will have a dedicated state, they will get their salaries from that state rather than getting it from the Consolidated Fund of India. You know, earlier, no, even now, because bill has not become law as yet, mm -hmm. we have got a joint cadre. Joint cadre means what? For two states, you have same set of persons serving two states. Mm -hmm. Of course, they are allocated. Functional, function wise, but liability to serve in either state is always there. Mm -hmm. One is liable to be shifted from Tripura to Manipur, Manipur to Tripura. Mm -hmm. Now the officers will have a more sense of settled life mm -hmm. because once the bifurcation takes place, Tripura officers will remain in Tripura. Those allocated to Manipur will remain in Manipur. Mm -hmm. They won't have to shift from one place to another. And then shifting means always, although theoretically it does not happen, it was theoretically only it was there. But in practice, it was not happening. That's what yes, Mr. Yeah. says. Yeah. When it was not happening, practically, this was the in de facto, this was the situation. But theoretically, so long as that provision is there for transfer from one state to another state, a, few, a man feels slightly uncertain. Ah. If he incurs the displacement of the government, maybe he'll be posted from here to a far off place in Tripura, or Tripura to Manipur. And as rightly said, both these states are problem states. Mm -hmm going by law and order uh, situation there. I remember an instance where a person from Andhra Pradesh cadre was sent to Tripura. 
and he was chief secretary of Tripura state. Such a strict man, he wouldn't allow any corrupt deal to go through, corrupt transaction to go through, corrupt order to go through. With the result, one day when he was in the morning walk, some hooligans deployed by the affected parties, they simply beat him up and left him for dead. Luckily, he did not die. Still, some spark of life was left. <laughs> then people came and intervened. He was shifted to all India Institute of Medical Sciences here, then everywhere. Ultimately, survived with great effort. It's now, uh, yes. uh, we'll just get into a break, sir. It's now time for uh, us to head into a break. When we come back, we will show you what impact this bill may have on government function. Welcome back. After the bill is approved by the parliament, the expenditure incurred on pay perks and privileges of these officers will now have to be borne by the state government. According to the existing law, the expenditure is paid out from the Consolidated Fund of India. The Northeastern States Reorganizations Act provided for the establishment of the states of Manipur and Tripura and to provide for the formation of the state Meghalaya and of the Union Territories Mizoram and Arunachal Pradesh by Reorganizations Act. We have always considered the seven sisters to be together. Mm -hmm. And so the idea was to have a joint cadre uh, so that there could be a uniformity. There was not uh, as much of a requirement in terms of numbers. Mm -hmm. And that was the reason why they had kept a joint cadre. But now with the increasing population and the increasing uh, requirement for a good governance and the security issues, they are probably trying to keep it separate for uh, Manipur and Tripura both. The initial strength and composition of the state cadres shall be determined by the central government by an order before the date of commencement of the Northeastern Areas Reorganizations Amendment Bill 2011. Under the existing law, the status of the recruited officers will remain unchanged. The commencement of Northeastern Areas Reorganizations Amendment Act 2011 shall not affect the operation, the rules and regulations made under All India Services Act 1951. What we are also in fact would be suggesting that uh, now that this decision which is a very welcome decision th that is being taken, I would suggest that this decision or similar decision should be taken for uh, bifurcating the Assam Meghalaya also mm -hmm. and for the Agmut also, the mm -hmm. Andhra, sorry, uh, the Arunachal Pradesh, Goa and uh, Mizoram. The demand for the bifurcation of joint Manipura and Tripura cadre in respect of each of the afforded services was initially raised by then the Chief Minister of Tripura in the year 2004. The proposal was considered by the central government after consultations with the stakeholders. Raj Kamal, Rajya Sabha TV. So the question is, uh, they brought up, there's the Consolidated Fund of India, which pays officers, and then these officers now shift to the payment system from the state. What is the difference? The difference is this, that uh, when a person is normally allocated to a state cardinal, it is the state which pays the amount, mm -hmm. the salaries, etc., borne by the state, because he is given to the state to function as an officer belong to a superior class. That's, that's all. But otherwise, the entire budget, etc., state has to provide for it. So therefore, that's how it is. And uh, so therefore... The impact state, of it. Uh, the impact on the officer. So for example, I'm so an officer, so, so for, and if I'm drawing money yes. from consolidated, from the central consolidated fund of India, and tomorrow I'm asked to draw my salary from the state. So long as state has got provision for payment of salaries is not bankrupt. Nothing to worry. Okay, I'll bring yes. in Mr. Mitra. Well, they, since you've, uh, you, you know the service conditions and things much better, yeah. what is the implication of this particular change? It has no particular implication, if I may say so. Because as uh, he just now mentioned, it's all India service officers. Uh, it's an interesting thing. They are recruited centrally by Union Public Service Commission, trained in one academy. And uh, the whole purpose, philosophy behind it, uh, creation of the services, mm -hmm. was to have a kind of unity and cohesion in a vast, plural, multicultural, multi-tribal, multi-caste, multi-religious India. They will have a sense of unity and cohesion. Mm -hmm. Whether I am a Bengali serving in Tamil Nadu, or otherwise. And also so, administrative standards. Uh, uh -huh. And then made a certain caliber, certain That's similar, right. but, but then they function side by side with the state government officers. And once you are given 
these particular strategic three services, particularly the first two, forest service came only recently. They are, for all practical purposes, they become the state service officers. Mm -hmm. The chief ministers of the state, they, they utilize them. But salaries are an important asset. Salaries cannot be changed. Salaries, you can get promotion uh, to the rank of... Is there a possibility of it getting delayed? No, I'm, coming to that. I'm coming to slow. that. Depending because the on state the, and the center are two different yeah, things. Yeah. Depending on the cadre strength, cadre vacancy. Like uh, when I was in Odisha as a young officer, I became a superintendent of police in four and a half years' time. Right, sir. But many of my colleagues in some of the other states took uh, you know, up to six years or before you must get promotion to a senior skill they might have taken five years. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing may happen. Mm -hmm. But in a smaller state, I don't think there'll be much uh, fundamental difference. Uh, maybe a few months here and there to get your promotion. But if there is no vacancy, for example, then you can always be sent on deportation to government of India. And the Qatar controlling authority's job is to see that uh, while the uh, one state on IPS officer remains DIG, and uh, with same seniority in another state, he has already become additional DG. Right, I get it. I'll, I'll bring in the point of governance, better governance and the right of the state to dis determine the number of officers it requires to ensure that better governance happens. Will it help on that front? You see, there is a provision in the cadre <coughs> rules of each service for review of the cadre from time to time. Mm -hmm. And then the responsibility is the central government to review the cadre. And when state development activities increase and administrative density increases, the state puts forward proposals for revising the cadre upwards to get more posts. And then the center con considers this thing, and then after interaction, they decide how much revision is, is required, mm -hmm. and they do that. Then the rest of the procedure goes on. States are also given power to, add, to make temporary additions to the cadre. In emergency cases, you require some urgently, at least for six months or one year, temporary addition state can make it. Mm -hmm. But if they want to make it for a longer period, that one year, etc., then they will have to go to the center, and center's approval is required. So this is the mechanism provided there In to the enable the state to meet the requirements of the state and also to enable the center to have an overall view and fix the cadre. This is the mechanism that is there. But on the practical aspect, I, I come into that. Yes, this is a very, very good point that he raised. On theoretically, he is absolutely right. Mm -hmm. But uh, what happens in practice, uh, and that is very unfortunate. Uh, after 2611, Indian Home Minister said that there are about four to 500 vacancies in the rank of Indian Police Service. Yes. And they are not filled up. And now they are taking some extra steps to get ex army officers to fill up uh, urgently and train them quickly in a short uh, commission basis. Why it happened? He says years of neglect. But the actual practice, what happens is, it is politics. Every state government, every chess chief minister wants to see that uh, he can manipulate, I am, I am using the word deliberately, and use the uh, civil servants, both from the police and administrative services, to the extent possible, to the best of his advantage. So theoretically, uh, Particularly if there are different kind of political parties, any state chief minister would prefer more to have state civil servants whose future lies throughout his career mm -hmm. in the state. He cannot go out uh, deportation to government of India and cadre control authority will have much say. So he will have less and less, if he can help it, IES and IPS officers to fill up the vacancies. That is how it happened today. Right. We have come to this pass. It's time for us to head into a break. When we come back, we will show you an interview with senior advocate Upmanyu Hazarika. Welcome back. My colleague Raj Kamal spoke to senior advocate Upmanyu Hazarika and tried to understand what, what is the reason behind this bill. Government is planning to amend this bill in this winter session. What are the recent amendments in this bill? Centrally administrative services like IAS and IPS are allotted cadres in terms of different states. Insofar as the states of Manipur and Tripura are concerned, the central services so far as the IAS and IPS are concerned, 
they had a central, uh, they had a joint cadre, in the sense that uh, the cadre of officials upon whom the both the states could draw upon for manning their various executive posts was common. So any IAS officer or IAS IP, IPS officer in Manipur could be posted to Tripura, or vice versa. So now what this act simply does is it's a minor amendment to my mind, because all it does is, is demarcates the areas between, uh, it demarcates and now requires allotment of a separate cadre to each one of these states. This is a simple amendment, then why it took 30 years for the government to amend this bill? It was probably deferred at that time because you see when you are forming a state in 1971 of demarcating several states out of one state, then there are a lot of issues you have to resolve in terms of demarcation of boundaries, in terms of having separate legislatures and all. So probably the government of that day did not think it expedient that they should start with the demarcation of officers because the cadre strength was probably s small. Officers were undecided as to where they would go or how it, a mechanism for allotment uh, could not uh, be evolved. So now that with the th experience of working of over 30 years, since it has worked in a particular manner, it, it, the government probably in its wisdom thought it better that you bring the legislation now. So both the states, Manipur and Tripura, have international borders, very important security-wise. Do you think, and the bill, as uh, Raj Kamal pointed out, if it was a minor amendment, then why take such a long time? What is the explanation? If they, they are so important, security-wise and otherwise also, then what? why this delay? The delay is because they had to consult mm -hmm. all concerned ministries and departments and officers. When security aspect is known, there's an additional reason to consult the personal connection with the border security, etc. So there, that's why it takes time. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, they were convinced it is desirable to have, bifurcate this card and they have it. Then one other aspect which, which to be consulted is, considered is how to allocate the personnel mm -hmm. and joint fund. <coughs> there again, the set procedure is there. There are a number of precedents now. That is, you take the uh, options from serving officers from the joint cadre, in which uh, cadre you would like to be mm. posted, allocated. Then as far as possible, accommodate their, their wish. Where it's not possible, forcing the central government <coughs> to decide where a man should go. That's how it is started out. On the practical side, you were uh, uh, going yeah. to make a point. See, both the states, Tripura and um, um, Manipur, both of them are very important security-wise also, and otherwise also, you yourself been in the uh, security position. So, given the relevance of this amendment and the practical aspect, the way service conditions actually happen in relevance to state and center, what are the points that you wanted to make? <coughs> well, the first thing is, uh, which I uh, wanted to tell you, that uh, ideally, the, uh, as I said, the cultural, social, tribal, linguistic coordinates are totally different. So it has to be, the uh, officer has to be especially sensitized mm -hmm. with the cadre, especially in the northeastern context, and more so in the context of Manipur and Tripura that we just now mentioned. So a Tripura man, suppose I served in Tripura for 15 years, then on 16th year, I go to Manipa, the other state, I will not be able to make any contribution. I have to again learn entirely the new tribal context, the new special problems, the new insurgency things. So it is, it is an aberration which took a long time to correct, number one. Number two, I still feel that once, since the central officer, all Indian officer can be interchangeable mm -hmm. and he has to go on deputation, there should be, after the recruitment in the uh, EPSC recruitment and training, for IAS officers in Mussoorie and for IPS in Hyderabad, there should be a special sensitization course, refresher course, soon thereafter, uh, say a condensed course of six months or seven months or one year, for officers of these cadres in the northeastern context. Because an officer from Bihar will find it not that difficult to function in UP mm -hmm. or in Madhya Pradesh or in Rajasthan. But these are special conditions for But every northeastern North state has a very special feature which requires a special sensitization. There is a uh, perception in especially the uh, northern part of India that northeast is one, but actually there are seven 
different states different and tribes, that. Tribal and communities are that yes, different. Yes, why is it uh, an issue with people of these services to work and function there? Why don't they want to uh, provide? You see, here in the Northeast, the situation is there are different uh, tribal communities in different areas. And they have their own customary laws and usages, et cetera, practices. Mm -hmm. And then they have their own differences also. There is sometimes, you know, things uh, take a very ugly turn. For instance, in Manipur, recently we had that Naga Manipur border issue, etc. And then the, the blockade went on for months together. Months, yeah. Making life of the people miserable. Now, in this situation, how do you expect the officers to tackle? So they have to familiarize themselves with the problem. They must also think of various strategies as to how to cope up with their responsibilities and try to elicit cooperation of people from warring groups. And, and they try is, <laughs> these, are, these are additional responsibilities, yeah, exactly. additional tensions, which is any officer has to cope up, which is not normal uh, routine work it is. So therefore, <laughs> these are... Uh, Thank you, sir, for joining us on this discussion. It is time for us to end the show. You can email your suggestions and comments to law.rstv at gmail.com. You can also watch our show on the YouTube. We will be back with a new issue and a new episode. Keep watching Raj Sabha TV.